I decided that I had a very serious question to ask you before we get into any glass bead play uh, today. And, and I love, I know you're taking notes and you're getting your thoughts in order and you're, you're doing your thing off to the side there. But I'm like, dude, is he texting with his chick while we're talking? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. Take I'm kidding. My, my little, you should get one of these. I love this thing. It's uh, t- I told you about this or the more, the remarkable, yeah. I think. Yes. You told me about it. Um, so how the fuck do you have time to get everything? I know we talked about this a little last time, like about having all these goals and plans and things we want to do and like, fuck, not having time, but you get a lot of shit done, dude. Like you do a lot of research and you read a lot of books and you also like me do a lot of different concepts with a lot of different people, but I'm, I marvel at all the book reading you're able to get done. So I have a serious question for you because there's only one, I've come to one conclusion. I'm not a particularly organized person, nor am I like the most disciplined when it comes to like administrative or organizational activities, right? But I'm a very hard worker, particularly if it's something physical. Um, but you get a lot of book reading done and and whatnot. Do you do you exercise? Are you an exerciser? No, I I, I started <laughs> up until this new year. I should get back into. I was I was mountain biking, and then I'm getting a little bit too old for that. But I like it. And then I was doing the indoor cycling for a little bit, and I enjoy that as well. I just need to get back into it because that's the problem with doing this sort of thing, you need to find a balance. And that's, I struggle with finding a balance because usually I'm, I hyper fixate on things. Yep. And when I hyper fixate, I tend to neglect other things and having yep. a family and doing this sort of thing doesn't really, it's not a good thing to neglect family time and, and all that other stuff. So I, I find ways of incorporating and my wife gets on, on this about me all the time where I don't ever disconnect and it's something and I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing where I feel like if I'm not learning something, it's I'm wasting time if I'm not learning a new concept. So I'm constantly either listening to to answer your question on how I do so much research. Well, number one, my job gets me more flex flexibility than others would. And I do a mixture of audiobooks, podcasts. But the problem with that is sometimes I'm looking into a subject that there are no audiobooks for, that there are no podcasts on, that there are no YouTube videos on. And those are the tricky ones. Or when I have a book that isn't formatted for, so I use this audiobook reader. It's called Evie. And they're Evie, the voice ebook reader. It's the one that I use. And I'll load up. A, and then, then the other problem is, as I am listening, how do I take notes? Well, I take screenshots. And the problem is when a book is so fire that I have to take screenshots every five seconds. So I'll be doing stuff like, oh, that was fire. Let me screenshot that. And then I either go back to it or whatever. And then I do a mixture of actually reading the book because I feel like I retain more when I read the book. And to be honest, Emily, like building a mind palace as you go, just remembering things and storing it away and just going about that. And if you want to put a presentation together, you can, but that's how I do it. Cause I get that question a lot. Like, how the fuck do you do it? How do you get so many things done? And I'll be honest, I just do it. And whenever I have a conversation with people such as yourself, I'm drawing from things that I've already read about. So I'm not, we're not, you know, I'll watch a show like, Oh, check this show out or whatever it is. And you saw how that show related to that other podcast that I had done. And that's what I strive for. I strive for building instead of a mind palace, a mind city, where it's like this building is for the homunculus. This building is for the Pythagorean palaces. This building is for whatever. And you navigate that that landscape and that city structure. And that's how I am able to somewhat get things done. And I'll be honest, I'm not 100 percent disciplined. I'm the, I'm the hardest working laziest person that you'll ever meet um but don't ever say you're too old to do a thing that you enjoy doing because once you because that that's what happens like i have friends 
that don't go to parties anymore, who love dance music, who love to dance. They don't go anymore because they think they're too old and they are the same age as me or they're younger than me and they look fucking 20 years older than me, right? Because it's that thing that you enjoy doing that keeps you young, keeps mm. you in the game, keeps you mind, mind nimble, body agile, all that kind of stuff, right? So back to your mountain biking. Yeah, I just don't want to break anything because it doesn't, they don't heal. The bones don't heal as they <laughs> used to. <laughs> that part is true. So just maybe like, I think twice before I take certain risks now when I'm, when I'm doing something physical, right? And there's some things I just choose not to do, but I do something mm. else instead, right? I don't, yeah. I don't really go upside down anymore. I don't break dance anymore, right? Like I just, you know, I've decided I had my time with those things and it's not worth it to damage myself and not be able to do other things that I'm excelling at now. And mm. there's not really a likelihood I'm going to excel at those things again, those physical things. Right. Yeah. So you make yeah. some decisions, but to the extent that you can participate in the thing you like to do, do mm. it. <laughs> yeah, so. I, I, It's been on the, it's been on the docket. So we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> All right. So, um, I, uh, I was watching, uh, I was, you know, I've been thinking about, we've had probably, five or six weeks since we did our last episode, which was not supposed to be the case, but my mom got sick and, and then she passed and whatnot. And so here my we condolences, are. by the way, thank you very much. Um, you know, so, uh, but I think it was good because like I got some time to reflect when I put the shows together that I put out and to sort of see what we had talked about. And first of all, my, my hat's off to you. And I appreciate you uh, being the first person to come and experiment on this with me because you know, Michael and I had a flow going that was, you know, years long and sort of, you know, we had sort of an epic kind of alchemy together and it's not easy to step into that for you, certainly, but also for me to like, okay, now I'm just going to do this with another person, <laughs> right? It's kind of, you know, and, and so it takes a little bit of time to sort of find its footing and see like where the places you will gel together are or not. But I think it's been a, a good and interesting experience for me overall, and I enjoy talking to you. So I hope you've enjoyed it. But Likewise. I kind of started to think, okay, like, where are we going back to? Because it's been enough time that I'm like, I don't know that we want to just like go back to what we were doing, but it feels like my mind has evolved to a different place sort of in the time in between. And it seems like you have. And I started thinking about, I started to get back to my thinking about architecture, about the Pythagorean palaces, about um, it, you know, Invisible Cities. I'm reading that book right now, Invisible Cities, which is really uh, the person who had the forethought to, <laughs> if you want to call it forethought, either that or, or the projective technology, uh, maybe knew I was going to be reading it during this time because it does match up to so many things I've said in between when he gave it to me and when I actually started reading it. And so I, my mind is back thinking on that. And I started to think about- um, Is it a novel? Of, it's a it's a it's a it's a book of like sort of poetry or prose with interludes, and the entire book ser serves as what's called a, a framing device, like the Is way it, you it, it it Italo Italo Calvino, Calvino. yeah, Italo Calvino, um, and so I started to think about invisible cities and and the homunculus we had talked about, and one of the things that had caught my eye, and I knew it was important, but I didn't know how when I watched Peripheral a few months back, and there's a lot of reasons Peripheral caught my attention, was because of what the future city of London looked like. And then some thoughts I started to have over the last couple of weeks when um, I, it's been cold outside here, so I haven't done as much exercise outside. But when I got a few chances to go outside, because I wasn't looking at the same landscape I look at every day for so many weeks, I started to look at some of the buildings with new eyes, right? And you've heard me talk about the, the buildings as interdimensional, the buildings as musical instruments, the buildings as genetic testing kits and all of these other things. And I still think all that's true. Um, but if we're dealing with something that is homunculus-like or a Pythagorean palace-like, or even like Transformer-like, if you ever saw the, the movie with, what's his name, Shia LaBeouf, the Transformer movie with the... Uh, Shia LaBeouf, I think, is in it, right? Where the buildings kind of get up and start rearranging themselves and moving around and walking. Mm -hmm. I started looking at the buildings as a few other things, too. And um, some new ideas started to come in. 
And it sent me back to, to peripheral and the buildings, if people noticed, some of them were gods, right? Some of the buildings had been erected so big and so high and were the figures of, um, you know, characters uh, real or mythological from the, you know, the sort of uh, theological or uh, mythological realm that we've heard of our, our, our entire lives, right? And I started to think about these buildings here in Austin. And I looked at some of the buildings and I'm like, these buildings look like they have spinal cords on them. They look like they're waiting for a spirit to come in and inhabit them. It's almost like the building is a scaffolding or creating the skeleton of a body that is going to ultimately be inhabited by a God or a homunculus, right? And I just started to look at the buildings here and think about the buildings in peripheral. And I was like, this is what I want to talk about uh, with Juan. And I think there's um, many paths to God, right? And um, I think there's a lot of things going on with architecture. But I think that, you know, that's kind of sort of the basis of some of the things I want to talk about. So I told you to go watch Peripheral. There's a lot of other interesting things in Peripheral that we can kind of get into. But that's kind of where I... Um, wanted to to play today was like literally getting into the architecture of some of these cities around us as like playgrounds for the gods.